And um, at the beginning of my practice, uh, I start to work on several projects that share almost the same context. The context of dealing with a kind of heritage. Technically, you can call them renovation project or refurbishing project. Project that question a question, uh, pre-existing architecture. Not necessarily in a sense of um, conservation of a cultural heritage through the medium of architecture like monuments or historical um, landmarks, but more on a banal situation occupied by a sort of uh, construction. And if there is a reason of this repetition of subject, uh, it's maybe because for a young French office, it's easier to have access to this kind of comment, and also because probably I'm not so interested by object, or rather by designing object as a professional practice. This may seem paradoxical for an architect, but as a primary motivation, I'm much more curious about the relationship between object than the object themselves. So in, on a very basic point of view, uh, if we consider architecture as a way to produce specific condition on a pre-existing environment, or more precisely, a way to divide the world literally into increased or impoverished constructed situation, it contains always the question of establishing an order with or without a previous one. Uh, so the first project I will show you mainly concerned um, the question of economy of means uh, through uh, programmatic indeterminacy. Economy of means, um, because it's a project with a very low budget, where money could be a problem. And programmatic indeterminacy, because we start the project without a defined program, but with uh, an existing building. And the building is an abandoned factory in the city of Marseille, in the south of France. Um, it's a sort of uh, wasteland. And as an industrial building of the end of the 19th century, even after a successive strong transformation during the last century, it contains a certain efficiency, a certain efficient capacity. Three floors of free plan, produced by a rational mixed structure of stone and cast iron columns concrete flooring and a wood frame for the roof, and four masonry walls for the perimeter. And as I said, we start literally without program, but also in a certain way without client. Firstly, we start a study for the city of Marseille, a kind of inventory, a kind of um, project of observation, a look at uh, an available combination of space and material. And after the study, we met an art school uh, what interested to move in this old factory. But the building was a little too big for their actual needs and for their budget. <laughs> and by a very pragmatic approach, with a minimum of intervention, we propose to produce an entire order by dividing the, dividing the free plan um, into a corridor, distributing a set of rooms, more or less equal in terms of area detached from a problematic infield. Huh? So it's so not really uh, an invention, huh? not really the invention of the year. So it's no more a flexible space as a free plan, but a very, very trivial organization where each room in terms of capacity could receive potentially a programmatic element of a school. Could be a drawing studio, a room could be also a photo studio, meeting room, an exhibition room. Um, the administration, a room for archive, and, uh, and so on, uh, a mix of what you want. And in a certain way, it's a project looking for the necessary and uh, sufficient, but not in a functional way. Um, it's a definition of a spatial order for a kind of let it go uh, occupancy. Uh. And we repeat the same plan on the three levels. So the school is a set of three corridors, two stairs, and 15 rooms. And um, even if you can inhabit it, it as you want, huh? the question of the occupancy is not really our business here. It was a kind of active demission uh, from our, our part uh, for the benefit of, uh, let's say, uh, an experience of uh, appropriation after the construction work. Huh? So just fixing one rules of partition for a possible changing in field. So the same plan, but different floor, so different conditions. Same in terms of measures, in terms of quantity, but obviously different in terms of quality. 
So here the the three corridors and the ground floor corridors is also the obviously the whole entrance uh, directly connect in contact with the streets. Uh. The first floor the first floor corridor is a windowless room and the top floor corridor is a room with a glass canopy. So same result with the, the other rooms. So at the end, we have, the, we have this collection of rooms, uh, almost the same morphology, but with different type of lights in relation with the outside, with the same minimum contemporary equipment of electric outlets, airing and heating system, and a sink in each room. So, so this is a room with a large window. This is a room with narrow window. This is a room without window. And this is a room with one window and so on. So in a way, we were looking for the most neutral device following the existing structure for the maximum variety of spaces, where each of them has a specific qualities by an operation of division. So it's a very simple project, but uh, produced by the clear and short uh, intention. So almost the same project, or rather the same approach for a display, huh? a scenography uh, for uh, an exhibition uh, center in Paris. And we didn't try to find any narrative uh, links between the project and the content of the exhibition. It's only a question of space as a tool for the curators um, to organize the content of the exhibition. And unlike the previous project that followed the structural rules of the existing buildings, we divide arbitrarily the space let's say, uh, la, uh, as an axiom, huh? with 11 walls into 42 equal rooms. So agreed as a natural measure, a project of a one wall that produce a variety of condition by separation or rather by uh, isolation. So it's a project of partition, but not totally, huh? because um, it's a partition with a certain weakness simply because the, the walls are small, uh, 155 centimeters high, so about uh, the height of a sh shoulder. So you have always and simultaneously the, the consciousness of a big space and small spaces. And what I'm interested in this kind of drawing protocol is that it integrates some collateral accident, some semi-involuntary situation. It's part of the process. Huh? and sometimes it's productive and sometimes it's not. So maybe here it's the, the second option, um, not very productive like this, uh, the, the dead end uh, footbridge, or useless handrail, or an interrupted stairs and so on. Huh? But the main goal of the project is obviously not to produce uh, just silly situation for my uh, own pleasure. Huh? It's above all a fragmented environment as a tool for the curators uh, where they could practice a fragmented speech, basically one room from one content, inhabited by one subject, one media, and uh, one furniture or a pre-existing element, without any hierarchy or with a kind of indifference. Huh? So it's agreed between a, a context and a content. So the next project engage once again uh, the same starting point, huh? a device of a neutral division of space for a variability of condition detached from a problematic infill. But here the concept is quite different. Huh? Uh, it's a proposal for a competition for the Centre Georges Pompidou, huh? and they wanted a mobile gallery, huh? a gallery that we could sell settle the everywhere. Huh? So you can also define it as an architecture without uh, a context, uh, or rather an arch architecture with a changing context. Uh. And it could be also considered as an extension of the two existing exhibition structure, uh, the one in Paris and the other one in, uh, in uh, Metz. Uh. And as an extension, we propose literally more rooms without any programmatic dis 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 distinction, sorry. So a grid of uh, 36 rooms, 
of 36 square meters, which each of them could tolerate a maximum of 36 people. So it's a natural set of rooms without any hierarchy, huh? any center, any boundaries, except the quantity of area requested huh, by the client. Huh? And technically defined by its ability to be moved by uh, trucks. So a kind of deep structure available to absorb changing context and context and content. But the grid is also a source of uh, variability. Huh? So each room are equal in terms of surface, but different in terms of volume. And different in terms of light and relation with these changing context. So in a way, um, and in the same time, we accept and reject the notion of unif unif uniformity of space as an interior landscape. Huh? With this collection of possible rooms which define an availability of use through different adjacent um, environments. So even the geometry is fixed, it's always possible to reprogram it huh, as a support and accept different conf configuration of um, exhibition. And also without any temptation to be figurative uh, or um, the temptation to introduce uh, symbolic attachment um, on the um, idea of what is a museum. So it's a tool determined as a survival, um, survival um, equipment. Huh? So the three previous projects are questioned only in an interior order. And the next three share almost the same starting point, uh, a rural uh, region with a house near a lake. And I like lakes. I like lakes because uh, they contain a certain picturesque uh, value as a landscape element with an ambiguous uh, state. Huh? Sometimes they are natural and sometimes they are artificial. And here in the, in the picture, um, this one is an artificial lake in the Morvan, in the east center of France. Huh? And as an anthropogenic landscape, a madman made landscape, it contains a huge and in a way virtuous shift in its mercantile use. The shift between a piece of a huge hydraulic network to provide firewood for the city of Paris during the 19th century and an actual opportunity of a touristic economy as an optic base for holiday. And as the first use of the lake, as a vestige uh, of the first use of the lake, uh, it uh, remains few elements, uh, a dam and uh, a house. And the house looked like a uh, little bourgeois mansion uh, with its uh, symmetric French harmony, uh, a sort of little ex ex eccentricity, especially in an environment uh, mostly um, occupied during the summer by seasonal uh, restaurants and uh, camping car. But this mansion, it's not really a mansion. Huh? It was a tiny abandoned worksite camp for the engineer um, during the um, construction uh, to survey the workers huh? uh, on the construction of the, of the dam. Huh? So uh, except the exact size of the symmetry, not really a big piece of architecture, huh? not a big piece of history, just an available construction. And in a support of the touristic de development of the, of the, the region, uh, the community of village around the lake want to extend the house into a cultural and touristical equipment, uh, an informational booth uh, with some exhibition space, a coffee a shop, offices, meeting rooms, the generic specification of a cultural equipment. Uh. And the house has also a garden with a constructed relief uh, with few uh, outdoor uh, out, uh, out buildings in poor condition. And we were paying close attention at the seasonal use of the territory. During the summer, it's full of tourists. Let's say in three or four months. And for the rest of the year, it's close to, to a desert. So why provide permanent uh, equipment for mainly periodic use? So to to answer this question, the project proposed to renovate and inhabit the existing stone construction 
as a permanent and functional uh, environment, and add a big room that follows seasonal climatic change, a weak room, a room as an in-between environment, huh? a, vol a volume that it removes the wind, the rain, the snow, but that follow the change of the solar light and temperature. So a room not defined by a function, but defined by um, a changing terrestrial condition. So once again, it's not really an invention. Uh, you can call it a jardin d'hiver, um, winter garden, greenhouse, uh, outhouse. So a glass house um, that isolates some elements of the existing landscape. A room where uses are changing according to the season. Huh? So the next project concerns a small villa along a natural lake near the French Alps. And once again, a community of villages buy this plot and want to create uh, touristic equipment uh, to promote the lake. Huh? Almost the same situation that the pre previous one. Huh? But this time the client said that it would be better if we remove the, the villa. There is an existing villa on the plot. Huh? So we ask why, and um, simply they said that they don't like it. And for us, it's quite difficult to define something as beautiful or ugly. Uh, it becomes a question of taste. Uh, and um, actually, I don't care about it, the taste. Uh, everybody has his own taste. It's almost impossible to include it as a parameter of a sharing project. Huh? So as a starting point, we decide to keep it huh? as a first rule, uh, as a first constraint, as a first opportunity, huh? as a condition that is already there as an available surface. But the villa um, was also too small for their ambition. They want offices, some facilities, uh, different exhibition space, coffee, shop, and so on. So we need to create more space. And um, as I said before, for uh, us, probably architecture could be defined by the, by the relationship between the object and the object themselves. So we provide a bigger room, a room around the villa to increase the area and define a new inhabited perimeter. So now we have two objects, huh? one we found and one we choose with their own specific qualities and capacities. So it's a combination uh, of relation between two objects in a certain context, um, with the minimum of inter intervention. Uh, so here, just one intervention. Uh, and the goal is to provoke the maximum opportunities. Uh, so it's still a question of a choice of orientation than a question of an inven invention. Uh. And in terms of qualities, we now have this collection of small rooms in the existing villa mm -hmm. as a domestic landscape with these peculiar, pecu peculiar uh, materials. Each room has a specific window, a balcony, a fireplace, a lot of elements that we probably never provide if we start with nothing less than the, just the specification of the program. And a bigger room, basically made by walls and a roof. And it's a room, but it's not really a room. Huh? It's a continuous space, but not an homogeneous space. The four wings, have different thickness and have or have not a uh, relation with the outside. Huh? And also, we have this third space huh, in between, uh, not totally designed and not totally found, huh? a collateral situation, huh? a resulting space, an outdoor room uh, just occupied by the house. So after this little uh, operation, it's now the question of uh, the, um, the occupancy, huh? how to occupy this variety of spaces. Huh? So that's the plan of the, the, ground plan, the ground floor with this big loop, like a thick wall around the house where it's possible to provide the public facilities, an extension of the garden, the lake, or the courtyard. And the, in the existing house, it's possible to include um, some permanent function, like storage or restroom. Huh? And on the first floor of the house, uh, you can put the offices. Huh? So finally, you, you will work in, 
in the holiday house. Huh? And that's how we conceive a possible way to inhabit the, the project. Huh? It's mainly a question of furniture uh, and uses. Huh? It's always possible to start over with a different layout. Huh? So a view from the garden and a view from the opposite bank of the lake where there may be the question of uh, taste, huh? uh, ugliness or beauty uh, becomes probably a dull question. Huh? So the um, third project with an existing house near a lake. Huh? So the house is on an island, on an artificial lake in the center of France. Huh? It's, but it's a um, very young landscape. Huh? The lake was constructed in the 50s to provide uh, electric power for, for, the, this, uh, for the, uh, the region. Huh? And in the 80s, the French Ministry of Culture decided to transform the island into an art park for sculpture with an art center in the middle, uh, actually designed by um, Aldo Rossi and Xavier Fabre. And near the art center, there is a house um, that was here before the lake. Um, and the project was uh, to transform it into an artist residency um, as an extension of the um, art center. <laughs> so it's a house, but it's not really a house. Huh? It's a small castle, or it's a house that's looked like a castle, huh? a kind of neo-Gothic uh, pastiche of the end of the 19th century. And as a house, some functions were already there, huh? organized by a set of small rooms. It was possible to sleep or to cook, it was just missing the possibilities of a place where artists could work together, a studio, an atelier. So the project mainly looking for the definition of what could be a studio for a group of artists. First of all, we tried to provide a bigger room, but this time by subtraction, following the morphology of the, of the castle. So a room inside the castle, but with his own, with a certain uh, autonomy uh, to increase the capacity of the studio. It has its own entrance to provide direct connection to the park. It crosses uh, the entire castle on every floor. And by subtraction, the resulting space still remains for domestic uses. Huh? So from the outside, or let's say from inside the park, there is no sign of uh, an intervention. Huh? Only a new door at the door of the studio. And it's mainly used as an atelier, huh? but we proposed during the construction work to increase its capacity and, and the possibility of users by changing its state into a public space, an exhibition space. A public space where, with an ambiguous uh, state where artists work in their own exhibition space. Huh? So the studio gallery is finally uh, not so big, huh? 120 square meters. And it's a continuous space qualified by a variety of situations. Huh? With an outdoor part uh, at the end, huh? open to the climatic change. With a corner, huh? a tight part, bigger volume. So finally, we consider the studio as a tool not determined by the function, but, but determined by the multiple conditions and situation for permanently changing uses. Huh? And for the rest, the, the domestic part, uh, we did the minimum of transformation. Huh? So no, no more lake uh, for the moment, but uh, still an existing, an existing building huh? uh, on the river. 
So it's a project for a museum in memory of the French poet uh, Arthur Rimbaud. But I will not talk about uh, Rimbaud. Uh, that's not really the subject. Uh, also because we don't want to find any risky narrative uh, links between the content as a project. Huh? So it starts with this old uh, water mill. Huh? But this time is, there is no question of uh, do we need to keep it or not. Huh? The building is an historical monument. Huh? Or to be more precise, the facade and the, and the roof are uh, registered uh, in the list of the historic, historical monuments. Huh? So the Ministry of Culture um, has decided for the client that for us, and we need to keep it. Huh? But this typical French registration don't have so much interest in space, huh? only for the element of the construction, huh? a roof and one facade. Huh? But it's OK. Huh? It's already there. Huh? Architecture is already there. So we don't want to negotiate with it. Huh? We don't want to try the risky exercise of a uh, physical extension. Probably the game lost in, uh, in advance. Huh? Even if it's possible to act on the other, side, uh, other part of the building, we know that the project will concern only the volume inside the building, huh? a non-visible uh, project. But we were a little bit frustrated by the area developed in the water mill. Huh? It has a big volume, but a small surfaces. So we decided to increase the, the area, to double the size of the area in the perimeter of the water mill. And this simple goal becomes the entire project, huh? a project about quantities, huh? to propose an architecture inside another one by increasing the area. Just a question of uh, quantity huh? with his own structure, his own syntax. So after removing the three existing floors, we had six levels in the bigger volume, and we leave the second volume free. So that's the, the first model we did, a sort of a shelf, um, sort of a storage, a little storage for, uh, as a museum, where it's possible to perform activities and provide, probably develop um, a story about Rimbaud. Huh? So now we have these two rooms, huh? a empty room and a filled room. Huh? So the autonomy of the structure. Huh? So in a massive construction, we choose a wireframe construction for technical reason, but also as a starting point as an organization. Huh? It's already in an order with a grid of, of columns, huh? repeating six times as a small free plan. And at this time, for us, the job is over uh, as the definition of, of a project. Uh, to, defin uh, to define an architecture as a support, uh, as a substructure where it's possible to perform, uh, where po it's possible to use it with a kind of indifference. Uh. But of course, we care also a little bit about the um, possible way to use it. Uh. But it's the matter of the content. Uh. It's open to different typology as a cyclical situation. So we tried some possibilities, uh, or maybe we tried to find all the possibilities um, as archetypes. With some silly option, like full of corridors, and big rooms, and small rooms, and, uh, and so on. No? So that's the view uh, on the ground floor under the structure. A possible floor with uh, object. Huh? A possible floor with walls. And always never touch the existing building. Huh? So the structure is just tolerate as a guest. Huh? It's probably not a permanent architecture. And it could also accept another degree of autonomy, huh? like a house in a house in a house. And that's the last model uh, with the full, um, the, the full option, uh, let's say the, the possible combination of occupancy. Huh? So the last project I will show you, huh? um, it's a project about a park. Huh? So no more old buildings as a starting point. But in a way, it's still the same story. Huh? 
an existing park, a park in a city, the city of Tirana in uh, Albania. And one of the particularity of um, the city of Tirana uh, is that it seems to be constructed around two very opposite urban fabric. The first one is completely ruled by the face in an order that can be planned and project on the words through a limited number of projects. Very strong uh, in their intention in the 20th century. Projects that define an urban uh, organization as a rational order, let's say a modern project. And the second seems on the opposite move by spontaneous tendencies is in Tirana, isolated until the 90s, is suddenly entered in the new phase of development, while major corporations multiply, multiply the ground with um, real estate development and population starts um, building illegal construction where it can lay down a brick. Huh? So the park of Tirana, it's clearly a modern project. Huh? It's built in the 50s around an artificial lake. Huh? And the project is um, a proposal for a competition. Huh? And uh, in the brief of the competition, um, it was to reorganize the northwest of the park. Huh? And uh, it's a really blur blurry uh, territory, uh, a mix of fenced uh, wasteland and uh, undefined threshold between the park and the city. Uh. So blurry territory as an opportunity to add new buildings. Uh, so a public service center, a police headquarters, offices for the administration, facilities for the faculties, facilities for the park, a car park for the visitors, and so on. Uh. So quite a huge project. Uh that tends into a kind of a contradiction. So by refusing a problematic approach on a blurry territory that could be considered as an available surface for real uh, estate development, we pay attention to the limit between the city and the park. Huh? And in a certain way, without questioning their states, but the limits through their simultaneity, huh? their concomitants. Huh? So the project is to reaffirm a clear border, but another one, it's designed as a master plan uh, with a modern uh, attitude, uh, let's say from the political. Uh, nor it's an informal project mimicking the vernacular fabric, uh, let's say uh, the imperative uh, one. Uh. So we propose a project adaptable to the structural versatility of the city. Uh, a project of negotiation, uh, but without frustration. Uh. And a limit is always an affair of three elements. Huh? The two limited objects, here the park and the city, and the limiting object, huh? more un ambiguous in its uh, existence. Huh? An existence between near to nothing and something. So that was the start starting point of the project, huh? how to deal with a limit as a field of an anticipation. Huh? So we propose the production of an intrinsic approach of the border, generate from within its own thickness as a sum of singular local co-boarding devices. So the limit has a unique goal, but open to the m multiple definition and materialization. And at this time, the proje project becomes a set of projects uh, without a predefined coherence between them. Uh, only the definition of a border through a set of vari variety of existing, alterate, or provoked situation as local singularities. And like, like a project questioning an existing infrastructure, a dam has a materialized limit, which is obviously here to ensure the existence of the lake, but also physical connection between two districts uh, of the city used as a pedestrian pass. Huh? And it's also possible to look at it as a linear support huh? along the lake, where it's possible to increase its co occupancy uh, by um, its particular condition. Huh? A project of an empty flat area, huh? a void, huh? an abandoned spore field, 
never used because it's fancy. Huh? And if you consider a void not necessarily as an empty plot ready for uh, real estate development, it becomes a kind of a luxury opportunity huh? for a public space with minimum of intervention. Huh? So firstly, here, just to, by removing the fence. Huh? A project of a little trick huh? uh, by shifting a schedule road to propose building areas along the park and not in the park. Huh? And take advantage of this apparently banal situation. Huh? A project of raising existing construction. Huh? Even if this is an exception of, uh, of the previous rule. Huh? A, project, a project of threshold, huh? where it's possible to activate the ground. Huh? A project of openness, where the back of a building, here the existing faculty, huh? doesn't have any access to the park. Huh? So like, this is maybe like the schematic uh, existing situation. Huh? Let's see, we make a new border with the element I explained just before. So local devices um, defined as a border. Huh? So, um, yeah, sorry. Uh, so at the end, um, the set of de devices uh, uh, save uh, finally a lot of uh, area, around 55,000 of square meters, which belongs now automatically uh, without any ambiguity to the park. Huh? And introduce a new project, huh? the resulting extension of the park, huh? with a kind of indifference. Huh? Let's have a project with, uh, without project. Huh? And that's it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.